will be a link put at the bottom of the page for the first debate for listeners who want to hear. <clears throat> this will be a untimed debate. There will be 14 topics, seven for each person. We will rotate them in order. There will be an opening statement given and closing statements by the two researchers. With me, I've got Matt Dowdick from Dallas, Texas, and Bill Brown from Cincinnati, Ohio. Matt, Bill, how are you? And thank you both for coming on. I'm doing good. Thanks. Yep, doing good. Thanks, Chris. All right, at this time, uh, Bill Brown, do you have an opening statement? Well, basically, I just want to lay out the scenario. Uh, You know, everybody knows that on November 22nd, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, in Dealey Plaza. But unless you're a student of the case or a researcher, you really don't know that a police officer was also killed in Oak Cliff, uh, approximately two to three miles away from uh, from Dealey Plaza. So basically, uh, we have uh, Lee Harvey Oswald leaving the depository building. He he catches a, a bus, gets off the bus because it stopped in traffic. He boards a cab, takes a cab to Oak Cliff, goes to his rooming house. And I'm, I'm just kind of skipping the, the specifics right now. But basically, uh, he goes to the rooming house. And uh, next next thing we know, a police officer is shot near the intersection of 10th and Patton in Oak Cliff. And uh, so a lot of people aren't aware that a police officer was killed that day. And, and I think Matt and I are here today to discuss the uh, the shooting death of that police officer and to debate. Uh, we're going to discuss the shooting death and we're going to debate a, a few of the issues uh, that uh, I think point to Oswald's guilt for the death of uh, J.D. Tippett. That was the police officer. And Matt is going to uh, basically argue that uh, someone besides Lee Harvey Oswald uh, was responsible for the murder of J.D. Tippett. I'm assuming that's what Matt's here to do. Matt, do you have an opening statement? No, I don't. I think my opening statement from the first, from round one is good. So I'm ready to jump into it. Bill, the first topic goes to you, and that will be the timeline from the depository to the rooming house. Okay. Well, basically a a lot of uh, conspiracy advocates like to argue that uh, Oswald could not have got to uh, 10th and Patton by, by 114, 115, which was the time that I believe the, uh, the shooting occurred of J.D. Tippett. So to, uh, to get him at 10th and Patton, 114, 115, we got to back up a little bit and get him to the rooming house at a reasonable time where he can leave the rooming house and then walk to 10th and Patton and be there in time. So basically... Uh, the secret in 1964, the Secret Service and the FBI they reconstructed Oswald's steps. Uh, this was with the help of Cecil McWaters, the bus driver, and William Whaley, the cab driver. And this was an attempt to determine the absolute earliest that Oswald could have reached the rooming house. Okay, and and based on McWaters' statement of where it was that Oswald boarded the bus, because we know Oswald boarded the bus because he had McWaters' specific bus transfer. And McWaters said that he issued the transfer to only one woman and only one man. And uh, Oswald walked about seven blocks east. This is from the depository uh, into the downtown area after he left the depository. And this was within two and a half to three minutes of the shooting. And Cecil McWaters said, so I gave her a transfer and opened the door and she was going out. The gentleman I had picked up about two blocks back asked for a transfer and got off at the same place in the middle of the block where the lady did. It was the intersection near Lamar Street. It was near Poydras and Lamar Street. Now, that's what Cecil McWaters said. So they concluded, based on what McWaters told them, along with the Secret Service agents and the FBI agents walking the route in an average time of about six and a half minutes, that Oswald boarded the bus around 1240 near the intersection of Field Street and Elm Street. And then after being on the bus for no more than, say, four, four minutes or so, Oswald got off the bus near Lamar Street and Elm Street. And he asked for the transfer as he got off the bus. And so now we have Oswald leaving the bus around 1244. And Oswald then walked three to four short blocks to the Greyhound station where he boarded Whaley's cab. And this has Oswald entering the cab roughly at 1248. Uh, They then, with Whaley, they reconstructed the cab ride from the Greyhound station to the intersection of Beckley and Neely. Now, Oswald got out of the cab on Beckley just north of the intersection with Neely, okay? And they concluded using a stopwatch that the cab ride took five minutes and 30 seconds. So now we have Oswald exiting Whaley's cab on Beckley between 1253 and 1254 and still using a stopwatch 
they concluded that it was a five minute and 45 second walk from the point that Oswald exited the cab back to the rooming house. So I think Oswald got to the rooming house between 1258, 1259, and uh, was back in his room just long enough to grab a jacket before hurrying out the door, uh, zipping up the jacket as he went out. So I have Oswald leaving the rooming house around 1259 to one o'clock. Okay, Matt. Uh, we discussed the timing last time, so I think that was really good. So what we did last time, so next topic. Well, does that mean that you agree that Oswald left the rooming house? Like I just said, are you, are you agreeing with me? He left the rooming house around 12.59 to 1 o'clock is when he went out the front door? No. W why not? Because we, we discussed that in our last debate, and I – all right. All right. All right. St stop recording right now, Chris. Okay. If, if Matt's just going to be like we discussed this – Matt, do you have a response? Uh, no, not really. I believe that uh, Oswald arrived at 1 p.m. and uh, stayed there uh, four or five minutes, and then several minutes later was seen at a bus stop, according to his housekeeper. And, yep. Well, it, but in my opinion, so, so why are you saying several minutes later he was seen at, standing at the bus stop? That's what she said, quote, sev several minutes later. Okay, and and how long do you take several minutes to be? Well, about two minutes would be a couple minutes or a few minutes, so several minutes, like let's say about five minutes. And your your expression, you're familiar with the ex, the expression a figure of speech. You're familiar yeah, with that. Yeah, so that's an excuse that you're giving right now. I trust. Well, it's it's not an excuse because because Roberts said also that he was back there just long enough to grab a jacket. She said that. She said that later. I'm, I'm well, she did say it, though, right? So, so you agree she said it, right? Yes, but I'm talking okay. about what she said originally. I basically feel that several minutes, a few minutes, a couple minutes, a minute or two, all that stuff is a figure of speech, and it's not meant to be taken literal. What is meant to be taken literal is when she said he was back there just long enough to grab a jacket. That's not a figure of speech. That's a literal description of the length of time that he was back in his room. I disagree. So I have Oswald arriving at the rooming house, 1258, 1259, going back to his room, back there long enough to grab a jacket and going back out the door, probably obviously grabbed his revolver as well. And he goes back out the door. And by I think by one o'clock, he's leaving the rooming house. 